Welcome to the Good Shepherd in the Child podcast, where we explore the spirituality of the Christian child through the method of the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. I am your host, Carrie Mackie Lozano. Today, Rebecca Reutzevich joins me again on the podcast to dive into the topic of the Concilio, the International Council of the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd that is a sign of unity of the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd, which is present in countries all over the world. So Rebecca, who is on that International Council, on the Concilio, she's here to tell us a little bit more about it and their upcoming meeting that they are having September 23rd through 30th. So please keep this Concilio meeting in your prayers now and especially during those days. I hope you enjoy. Rebecca, welcome back to the Good Shepherd and the Child podcast. Thank you. It's good to be back. Good. It's always good to have you. You're such a wealth of knowledge. I love having you on the podcast. For anybody who might not have heard you on the many previous episodes that we've been blessed with your presence, tell us a little bit about who you are and your involvement in catechesis. Well, I was a Montessori uh, directress, or we try to not use the word teacher, but I worked with zero, uh, three to six-year-old children starting in the mid-70s. I got trained in London and came back to near my um, place where I'm from, East Tennessee, and began to be with three to six-year-old children in a Montessori school. But at that same time, I was searching for my adult place in the church. I had grown up Methodist, and the church was the center of our family's life. Uh, but I hadn't really found um, such a, a home for myself. And I began a search that uh, landed me in the Catholic church, and I began to pray for a way to um, to be with children in this Montessori way, but to be able to also address faith and, and name God. Um, I did not know at that mm -hmm. time that um, Maria Montessori had actually said that the fullest expression of her methodology would be seen in the area of religious formation, and nor did I know that a person named Sophia Cavalletti or John Nagobi existed and had already been working since 1954 to flesh out what that religious formation should be. And so I uh, ended up, the uh, little Lord answered my prayers, and I ended up meeting Sophia in Houston, Texas at a Montessori conference unexpectedly, but it was an answer uh, absolute answer to my prayer. So I ended up getting to go to Rome and, and do the course. At that time, it was a two-year course for ages 3 through 12. Uh, soon after I finished, they realized it was too intense, even for two years, and they extended <laughs> it to three years. So um, I came back to Washington, D.C. to uh, work in a new school, Christian family Montessori that their vision was to make it Montessori affordable to anyone, which was a rarity in the Montessori world, and to have the atrium as its heartbeat. So I was very blessed mm. to get to grow with children from level one or what the, the Montessori primary and go all the way through uh, till they were 12 years old and got to see those same children kind of grow up in the catechesis. So, And then I've been in Memphis now for 25 <laughs> plus years. I, I, I've lost track. Uh, not <laughs> no longer uh, doing Montessori, um, but well, Everything we do is based in Montessori, but I'm no longer a Montessori teacher, but I've been doing the catechesis here in Memphis with children, both at my parish, St. Patrick's, and at the Missionaries of Charity. So I continue uh, with the children and translate and do different 
um, task for the National Association, but it's very much my life still. <laughs> yeah. We're so grateful for everything that you provide us. It's amazing. All the different books and translations and thank you. such yeah. a wealth of knowledge. So appreciative of you. Thank you. So one of the other tasks that you have is being a part of the International Concilio, which is what I really want to dive into with you today, just to help us understand what that is. So, Rebecca, could you tell us what is the International Concilio? It is the organization founded by Sophia and Gianna Silvana Montanaro, Tilde Cocchini, the original Rome team, who realized having given courses in the U.S., in Mexico, in Colombia, um, in different parts of Europe, there came a point when they realized that some minimal structure was needed for the purpose of unity and ongoing communication among the different places where the work was being done. So that, again, they had started in 1954 with this work, and it was really not until uh, around 1990 that they began to realize that the work was spreading so quickly to different cultures, different countries, and that there needed to be some body, body as in a group who continued to nurture that unity among the different cultures and places where the work was being done. So that's it. it, it as we defined who we are, um, back in uh, 1993, it started, although the Concilio was not officially formed until 1996. We had an international gathering in Rome in the, uh, 1993 in the fall. 45 people were present, and it was this conversation about this need for unity. Uh, so it was the precursor to actually forming the concilio, but but the, one of the first definitions that we came up with or identifications for the concilio was that it shall be a sign of unity. Mm -hmm. So what would you say is like the main tasks of the International Council of the Concilio? To pray together, <laughs> to communicate with each other, to hold that mission of Catechesis of the Good Shepherd and its authentic identity. Um, in, the, in the years when Sophia was still alive, John was alive, Silvana Montanaro, in those early years, what I most like to tell people is that these were not business meetings. We would meet in Rome for a week and all, out in that week, during that week, I would say not more than 20% of it was what might be recognized by regular institutions as a business meeting. Mm. <laughs> the rest of it was prayer, meditation, fellowship. Uh, each concilio meeting, Sophia would, um, she really was the main planner in those days of the themes. She would ask us for input, but she always had chosen particular themes for us to go more deeply into, whether that was mm. the covenant or ecumenism or the objectivity required of us to be a good catechist. She would choose a theme and we would pray and reflect on that theme. And so it was a place of growth, continued ongoing formation. Um, another thing that distinguishes our catechesis, that you don't get the, the doctorate and then you're done. Um, you, right. you spend your life further studying and being formed both through reading, 
studying the Bible and and the fathers of the church and so forth, but primarily remaining with the children also, um, and mm-hmm. really becoming always better at observation and making the match for the child. So that that mm-hmm. was always in the early days, I would say, you know, 75% of what we did when we came together, strengthening our unity in what's most essential about the child and about the Bible and the liturgy. It was an ongoing formation. That's really beautiful. That's really great. And the idea was that these leaders of the different main hubs, I'll say, of catechesis around the world, those leaders would go back and share that yes. continual formation with the yes. people around them in their areas. That's right. And in the beginning, we were we had to do a lot of work to just figure out our own structure. And we realized that the concilio, in order to operate efficiently at some uh, level, we need there needed to be a limit. Um, a choice, a selection of how this body was constructed. So what was clear to us in the beginning was that Sophia and Gianna, Silvana, Tilde, uh, they were our executive committee. And mm-hmm. that was clear from the start. They were really leading every all our efforts. But then we realized that each place in the world that was truly um, developed in terms of they all three levels of courses had been offered, um, experience with the children over a number of years, actually seven years at least. You know, we realized that because the Concilio will be, in a sense, ambassadors not only back to their own association, but to other areas where an association has not yet been formed, but the work has mm-hmm. been planted. So our we decided then uh, that each country where that met these um, requirements, um, all three levels of courses had been given. Um, they were able to give their own courses. Uh, that they would get to send two representatives um, chosen by their association uh, to this concilio body. And then they would have the responsibility to go back, share what happened, but also make contact with other places where they did not have an association. So Mm -hmm. take under their wing new country where the work had been planted. Mm -hmm. So that continued, that structure continued until the 1999 uh, Concilio gathering. So we were meeting every three years, beginning and really officially 1996. We came back to Rome every three years to have our meeting. And Sophia and Gianna, Silvana Montanaro and Tilde Cocchini were on that executive committee through that time. But even by 1999, they realized that they were aging and they needed to think ahead of a structure that would go on after their death. So Mm -hmm. by 2002, that concilio, we uh, moved to elect a new executive committee, it was called at that time. Um, And that's when I was one of four elected uh, to be that part of this executive committee. It later became known as or called in Italian junta, which really means board, uh, like Mm. a board of trustees. But the word uh, has a fairly negative connotation, the junta, uh, 
in Spanish, a lot of the Central American countries. So we we usually say in English the board, but we were we were uh, elected um, in two thousand and two, and then it was established that there would be two members chosen from each of the member associations, which at that time there were only six. So 12 people, so the the numbers would be manageable in terms of our gatherings. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. You see, if you look at the history of our Concilio, it was a slow and very careful development. It, It wasn't conceived, you know, a late night meeting and this is the way it's going to be. We <laughs> felt their way all along. So mm-hmm. Sophia died in 2011 and that previous year, she, uh, John had already passed. Um, Sophia wanted to lock in something that would give her the assurance that the work would continue and be faithful. And so uh, she designated that this executive board that had originally been chosen by the Concilio members, that we would not be open to uh, or subject to being unelected or reelected. She named us as a kind of permanent board, uh, the four of us, and although she said that this group could expand as needed and according to, um, you know, that we were going to age out and die too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Um, so that that's when that the body of the board or junta got really solidified was in 2010. And she died then in that following summer. Of 2011. So, who else is on the board with you? Francesca Cocchini, um, who, as you know, is was uh, an older child in the atrium um, and has been there ever since. Nora Bonilla, who's Colombia, the association in Colombia, and again, she was in Rome at the same time I did my training in the late 70s. Um, and then Teddy Loyo from Mexico. So it's the four of us um, that form the board. And how many people now are on the full concilio? Well, now we have seven uh, countries. Um, we're getting ready for a concilio meeting in another month. In fact, yeah. a month from today, I'll leave for Rome. And there are other countries uh, that are right on the brink of being becoming concilio members. Um, so it's a changing body um, and very still very exciting to be back uh, together. We have not been in person together since 2017 because of COVID. We've mm. had concilio meetings on zoom we've had board meetings on zoom but this will be uh, the first time in six years that we've been in the same (laughs) room together and of course very much looking forward to that yeah yeah that'll probably have more of that feel like when sophia was where it's the the community building as well the continual process and formation that comes it's hard to do that over zoom Right. So United States Association is represented. There's Canada, Mexico, Colombia, Australia, Italy, Germany. Germany. Germany, yes. Let's see. And is there anyone? Is that it? Is that all of them? That's US, seven. Canada. Yes, seven. Right. That's awesome. We, so yeah. two people from each of those large associations yes, are chosen, are right, and they're chosen by their own association, chosen, appointed. I, I don't know if 
I don't think anyone does it by election, straight up election. I think it's usually discerned by the leadership in that association who yeah. might best serve. Yes. Yeah. So um, that's seven associations, but CGS is present in about 65 different countries all over yes. the world. I and it's those I seven associations. Isn't that amazing? That's just, it's probably <laughs> it actually is. bigger now. But those seven associations, they're committing to supporting the, the right. what is that, 58 other, 58 exactly. plus other countries that exactly. don't yet have associations. That's awesome. So exactly. tell me, Rebecca, what are some of the things um, that y'all plan? Are you allowed to tell me some of the things sure. that you're planning on pr- uh, <laughs> praying through this n- upcoming Concilio meeting? Oh, let's see. This upcoming one, two of the main things that we will be looking at are the growing work um, with zero to three Mm -hmm. and with the adolescent. We've been talking about this uh, in concilio meetings all the way back to, let's see, around 2002 when Silvana Montanaro gave a very inspired talk on the psychic embryo of the child that from conception and the very earliest time of life that they are already have been given these capacities that are to be nurtured and and are to blossom in the child. When I was in the Rome training in 79, to 81, Silvana was concurrently doing one of the zero to three Montessori trainings there in Rome. And so she would come to our catechesis training course and share these insights from the most current scientific research about the life in the womb. And cool. it, was fasc- it was fascinating. It planted the seed in us to to realize which in that that this doesn't this religious nature of the child doesn't just pop up at age three um, but has been there um, all along we just it's just more difficult to recognize it because the child obviously is not verbal we can't talk to them we can ask them direct questions so in 2000, Four, when we were preparing for the 50th anniversary of the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd, my task was to go to Rome and interview Sophia for um, a publication we were doing. is called the Feshgrift, which is the celebration of 50th anniversary. And so when I interviewed her, one of the questions I had asked was, what are your greatest hopes for the work? going forward and her answer her first answer was that it go younger and younger so Mm. she she felt that she and john had had to stay focused on three to twelve but both the younger ones and the adolescent the adolescent she had been working with they had been working with almost from the beginning but she never published about the adolescent because she they had to stay so focused on three to 12 but she had yeah. told me uh, when I went to her once uh, you know having observed their adolescent program that was amazing I had gone to her and said you know tell me more write us why don't you write a you know a book or an article um, and she said, no, that will be your generation. In the com- <laughs> yeah, you all will do that uh, <laughs> later. Uh, so it, it's been in the works and it will be in the Concilio again this year where we will look at, uh, we're doing a survey, which countries have been experimenting with zero to three and the adolescent. Um, we'll look again at what are the guidelines for working with these two age groups? Um, and so that will be part of it. Uh, our, 
there are certain themes that are always part of a concilio. And one of them is we're always refining our understanding of who we are, of what is the catechesis. Because the most natural thing is that something begins to, you know, grow kind of wildly. So then all these new things start to crop in, this person or that person. Uh, and then you, if you don't go back and hold yourself in check, the easiest thing is to become many things instead of what you most are meant to be, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yes. So yeah. I've, in looking, in preparing for this, I was looking back at all these different meetings since 1993, the precursor, and really what's consistent besides the fellowship, the friendship, Sophia began every gathering with a moment to marvel over the, the mysterious and wonderful network of friendships. That was very much mm. her line that are formed when we follow the child. There's this beautiful uh, bonding with other adults, even if we are completely different in personality, in background, in personal style. And mm -hmm. she always began them that way. But as in terms of the actual content of those meetings beyond prayer and fellowship, really almost from this, well, from the very start, there are certain themes that just come up every time as if you don't know who you are in one moment. It's an ongoing return like Isaiah says, in returning and rest, we shall be saved. But it's who are we in this work? And what are our characteristics that help us remember who we are? Sophia, at her, before her death, said, um, these 32 points do not need to grow in number. Rather, we need, you will need, we will need to go back to them and go deeper into their meaning and how they apply to our life as catechists. So the, the characteristics are always part of our concilio meetings. In 1996, we formed certain statutes or guidelines that, that look at what does it mean to be a catechist? What does it mean to be a formation leader or formation facilitator, as they call it in Canada? Um, what, does, what are the requirements? We have to be clear. We have to have standards. We have to have guidelines. And yeah. that is going to be part of every concilio meeting, this refinement of our own identity and how we operate. Um, so that's all, always a part of it. And then I think this particular time, um, we will also be reviewing our structure as a concilio. Is this, is this something that's going to serve the work well going forward? Um, hmm. so again, as the four of us on the board are all, Moving uh, to an older age and so forth, how, are we going to expand the board? Are we going to, how are we going to do this? Mm -hmm. um, so that will be part of it. One of the most practical things that we always struggle with is the catechist album page that we make as part of our formation as a catechist. And we go back to it all through our lives. I, my albums have gone through every imaginable transformation <laughs> from the time I did them. Sophia uh, read our album in the Rome course and made a few little comments. But since even she approved my album, I've changed it 
really every time I give a course, I see mm-hmm. that it could be a little more essential. It could be, it could be more essential uh, than than it is at this point. So, helping how the big question is how to help people in courses to make a good essential album page because, as you know, it must be a work we do in order for it to be part of us. So other right. methodologies have in even a similar, a little bit similar uh, method of working with religious formation at one point printed a book and literally it's a recipe book. And uh, all you have to do is do what the, the page says touch the box, say this, touch the Mm -hmm. box, say this. And it's like, no, no, it has to be uh, a moment, a presentation has to be a moment when the Holy Spirit speaks with the child, with the adult facilitating it. It will never be exactly the same because the children are different you as a, a presenter have to just have to know the most essential announcements that correspond to this developmental period. But exactly what you say, exactly what the children say cannot be cut in stone. So mm. album work is always uh, discussed. Another issue that we always work on in some form is our publications and coming up with those most basic guidelines about translations and publications. Um, So that's always on the agenda as well. But we ask each, we've asked each member country to tell us now before the meeting, um, they, they will submit a report because Uh, If you have seven countries give a verbal presentation of all the work they're doing, that could take another whole week. Yeah, especially when you add translation into that. Yes, we have three languages, English, Italian, and Spanish. So we try to have the countries, the member countries, submit a report. Hopefully in the next week, we'll have those reports, and then we can all read each other's reports so that when we're together in a shorter uh, amount of time, some highlights, uh, maybe a PowerPoint, but not trying to share everything verbally. Um, Right. Yeah. So that will be part of it. Well, sounds like it is very important work for maintaining the 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 essence that is this right. work of the catechesis of the good shepherd as yes. well as prayerfully growing yes at the holy yes. spirit's speed <laughs> i i was yes. i want to point out that what you were saying about the infant toddler the zero to three as well as the adolescence y'all meeting does not mean that you're going to come home with a program <laughs> you're not going to come home with it finished you know this is Absolutely. this is a, a prayerful process where we are coming together and sharing and observing and um exactly. it's one step in the process somebody i think it was elizabeth calancini told us that uh you know it to- it took sophie and jana 20 years to create the zero to three i mean no the three to six three atrium to six. so we yes. have to be slow about this process so we can't expect to we have do. it all all done but the work of the concilio is to help that process right and so at this point what do we know for sure that we can we can acclaim we can say and and a lot of that what we know for sure is that we follow the montessori understanding interpretation of development. So there are things about the newborn, there are things about the toddler um, and their development that we know and we can we can acclaim and we can remind ourselves of those. But in terms of the re- specifically religious 
components. We're just learning. Right. Um, we're just learning that. And we have been doing this actively and intently now for nine years. No, eight years. We started the first course was in 2016 in Wales. Elizabeth led that course. Um, and there have been courses and people working with the zero to three uh, in the catechesis for the seven years. Um, and so it's time to say, what are we learning? What have we tried? Mm-hmm. What, what are the responses of the children? Um, and that's really all we're doing at this point. We're calling Mm -hmm. forth the discoveries made and continuing to ponder um, in search of, yeah, what's most essential for them. Right. Right. So the coming meeting will be September 23rd through 30th. So I'd like to just petition for all the listeners to really pray in advance for that meeting, but also during those dates to really pray for the concilio just um, and for this work for us to just really be guided by the Holy Spirit and to be docile yes. to it. So yeah. um, is there anything else, Rebecca, that you want to lift up before we finish today? There is one thing because it's it's um, at the very heart of who we are. It's a paradox, but we're, we see it at all levels of the work, this paradox. It is both, there is both a beautiful underlying structure, not created by an adult, but discovered in observation and long-term study of the child in front of us. And so Mm -hmm. it is, there are essentials. The what we call the spiral method and and what is the best match for the three to six child and the best match for the six to nine and nine to 12 child and so forth. We've, this has been going on for 60, almost 60, um, no, what? 1954. (laughs) Almost 70 years. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Almost 70 (laughs) years. So there are things we can trust. There are things we've learned right? But this paradox is more that Sophia said, uh, well, I wanted to say it in Italian, la struttura, the structure, deve essere, must always be sempre leggera, light, light. And so as the work grows, the temptation is always there to become institutional, to become so organized with such a a staff of thousands, you know, that we are managing and controlling. But all along, well, the original 10 characteristics for the catechesis included that we are about the de-schooling of catechesis. Mm Mm-hmm. And what that means, there is another reality, a a place of prayer, and you have to let go of those, some of those more academic controls. Mm -hmm. Um, If you're going to truly be a place of prayer, well, it also applies to the deinstitutionalization of this work. And it's a paradox because some structure is needed. In fact, in order to be fruitful, uh, our work does require some organization, some coordination. But everything must be in service of the reality of the children, the atrium, the life of the family, it can never become uh, institutionalized and um, a, a, a priority uh, above everything else. Mm-hmm. That was very important to Sophia. So even in forming the Concilio, she never let us forget that the, the real work is 
a spiritual work. It's a work of fidelity and commitment, but it is not like another institution or religious order. Um, it's, it's always uh, at the service of the child. And so mm -hmm. that can feel messy sometimes. Um, it can feel very challenging, but it's why I think it has lasted so long and will continue to last. Yeah, it's very much like having an open fist, like a lack of control that makes some people right. very nervous. But it's exactly it's trusting the Holy Spirit. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Rebecca. Thank you really for helping us understand what this very important group is and allowing us to pray for y'all during this important thank time. Thank you. We will need it as always. Thank you. Thank you all for listening to this week's episode of the Good Shepherd and the Child podcast. I hope you enjoyed listening to Rebecca lift up for us all about the International Concilio. Please remember those dates, September 23rd through the 30th. Mark them down on your calendar. And please pray for the Concilio while they are meeting in Italy. I also have some links in our show notes if you would like to see the 32 points of reflection, the characteristics of catechesis of the Good Shepherd that Rebecca lifted up, as well as some other pieces that you might be interested in if you want to know more about the Concilio. I'm also putting in our show notes some links if you want to listen to other episodes that Rebecca has joined us on the podcast. This podcast is sponsored by the United States Association of the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. We would like to thank all our contributing members because you are making this podcast possible. If you would like to know more about Catechesis of the Good Shepherd, or if you would like to become a member, please go to cgsusa.org. Thank you all for listening. We will see you in two weeks. Go and fall more deeply in love with God.